Hey everybody, Luke here at Tom Kelly Volvo Cars. Today we're going to be taking a really long format look at our brand new 2022 C40 all electric. This is Volvo's freshest model. If you want to cut to the chase and you just want to see the basics, I do have a shorter three minute video up on this exact car. I'll link to that in the description. But if you want to see everything there is to know about this car, interior, exterior, and then we're even going to take it for a drive, you better stay tuned. One important thing to point out before we get too far into it, these come in three different trims. We have the Core, Plus, and Ultimate. Our demo here, this is going to be an Ultimate trim, so this is fully loaded up with all the different features. Starting up here at the front, we have nothing but LED lighting. So our fog lights down low there, and of course our Thor's Hammer active bending headlights, those are all going to be LED. Really cool thing the C40 gets is we now have a welcome sequence, so I'm going to go ahead and lock the car. Then we'll unlock it. You can see the light turn on there just to welcome me, so that'll do that every time you walk up to the car and unlock it. Another important thing to point out, this is an EV, so that's really easy to notice because the entire grill has been blocked off here. There's a very small section here, so we still have a little bit of cooling going in there for our battery and our motors, but we do not need near as much as we would have for a normal internal combustion car. Having this blocked off is going to reduce our drag significantly and help increase our range. Under the iron mark here, we've got forward-facing radar and several other sensors for our safety systems. And then up there in the top center of the windshield, we're going to have even more. Over here at the side of the C40, one particular thing I'm a big fan of are these wheels. These come on the Ultimate trim. They're a five-spoke, 20-inch, and they're diamond cut, so it gets us our chrome finish there. I think they're very reminiscent of the Volvo R wheels that were on R models in the 90s and the early 2000s. So I think it looks really nice. Those are wrapped in Pirelli Scorpion Zero tires. An important note about those, they're staggered. So the rear axle gets 255s, the front gets 235s. The reason for that is this thing accelerates extremely quickly, and when it squats down, you want to have as much width back there as possible to get the power to the ground. Unfortunately, that means that we will not be able to rotate rear to front or front to rear because they're different widths. Looking at it from this angle, you can see that our rear tires poke out just ever so slightly. They're 20 millimeters wider than the ones in the front. One thing I point out to recharge customers that get kind of worried about not being able to rotate tires Keep in mind, you have no oil changes, no air filters, no spark plugs, none of the maintenance that we're used to. So spending a little bit more on tire maintenance is going to be something that's not really that big of a deal. You're really going to save money in the long run anyways. Also here at the side, as you can see around the wheel wells and the bottom of the doors, we have a little bit of plastic cladding. That really goes nicely with the Fjord Blue on this car. It can be hit or miss depending on people, but I really like the look of that. We got more black up here. As you can see, our mirrors are gloss black as well as our roof. It's a really, really cool look with this sloping back combined with a Fjord Blue, I think looks really nice. Here on the door handles, we're gonna have keyless entry on all four of them. So I have the key in my pocket. The mirror is showing me that this car is locked, but if I put my hand in here, it'll unlock for me. It's super simple and the mirror will fold out. To lock it up, all I would need to do is cover this little rectangle and it locks up for me. Back here, obviously we have our charger port. I'll talk more about that when we get to the powertrain. Round at the rear, clearly we have no tailpipes because they are completely unnecessary and we have more of that plastic to match what we have going around the entirety of the car. So you can see here we have our P8, not T8, recharge twin badge. So this shows that this is only an electric car. Of course, we have our hands-free power operated tailgate and that'll show off the fact that this is a sport back, more of a lift back style vehicle. Come around here to the side. This is based off of our XC40 recharge and essentially we took an SUV and cut the back end off to make it more aerodynamic and more sporty looking few cool little details on the rear of this car these this spoiler and up there on top these twins right there do a little bit to reduce drag and add a little bit of range to the car and then you can see our volvo style tail lights we really like our vertical tail lights so the car is unlocked right now if i lock it you can see they'll shut off in order and then unlock it they have a welcome sequence which is really cool the camera doesn't do it justice it looks really nice in person Last thing, no rear wiper on a C40 due to the way the air is going to travel across here. It'll pull the water down off of there while you're driving. While you're driving, you shouldn't get any water accumulation. It'll only be when you're at a stop. That's all I have for you on the exterior. So we'll move to the interior. One really cool thing about EVs, they have a frunk. I know that's a funny word, front trunk, but that's what it's called. So I went ahead and already hit the hood release that's inside. It's just like a normal car. You have to use the hood release first. That's because there's gonna be a lot of air hitting this. It has to be strongly latched down so it doesn't come up. So just like normal, you hit your hood release. Little Volvo tip, the iron marks arrow is almost always pointing at the hood release. That is gonna be on any Volvo model that I've ever really worked on. Pop that open. You can see where there was once engine, now we have storage. This being that it's a little bit more difficult to get to than the rear, we recommend it for things that you use less often. So up here was where the charging cord would go. I have it somewhere else. So I recommend putting your emergency roadside stuff up here, your charging cord and that type of thing. Below this, 
We have our air compressor and our tire sealant. Should you unfortunately get in anything in your tire, this should get you to us and then we can fix it properly. Now you pop open the hood and there's really nothing to look at under here. One thing we got, washer fluid. We'll top that off for you if you come by, but if you need to do it on your own, right there. While we're talking about cargo carrying, I moved over here to the back. I'm gonna pop this open so we can talk about that a little bit. Another thing about EVs, we get a lot more space in the rear since there's a lot less going on back here. There's no gas tank, differential, or any of that type of thing. We just have the one motor down there. So this C40 has our grocery bag holder option, so we can just fold this up. Gives us a couple hooks here to hang grocery bags on so stuff isn't rolling all around. Underneath that, this is actually our load cover. I'll show you that installed here. All right, now I've got that load cover installed. It's gonna move with the hatch and just cover up whatever items we have back here. If you have valuables, just cover them up and out of sight, out of mind, you don't have to worry about it. It's a really smart piece of engineering making that so you just flip it and stuff it under there. I see a lot of these don't come back with cars because they get put in the garage and totally forgotten about. Underneath where that load cover lives, you can see we have our jack and our lug wrench and all that different stuff for if you do have to take the tire off. And we have a small little well there for some other items should you need. Last thing regarding cargo, I went ahead and folded down the second row of seats there. So EVs also, we don't have a transmission tunnel, no drive shafts or anything under there. So we can make the floor completely flat. That also allows us to make the seats fold down completely flat. So the only place you're losing really any practicality compared to an XC40 is height right here. Otherwise, this vehicle is gonna be practical for most people. You can get furniture in there, large items, dogs, whatever you want. Moving into the passenger compartment of the C40, there's a couple things to talk about on this. Volvo is really heavy into sustainability. It's very important to us as a company. So to point that out, we have no leather in this interior, not one stitch of it, there's none. Also, this Fjord blue carpet that matches the exterior, that is made of recycled PET bottles, so water bottles, that's entirely made of that. Sustainability and luxury can definitely still go together though. Our leatherette down here is extremely nice. It reminds me a lot of Napa leather, it's very smooth. Then in the center, we have Nubuck textile. This is to give you additional grip while you're cornering. This thing can corner extremely hard, so having this to hold you in the seats can be really helpful. All of our plastics in here are all soft touch. None of it is that hard, trash can feel and plastic. All of it's soft and really nice to interact with. Feature-wise in the rear seat, we get a little bit of storage right there, cup holders and that type of stuff. The outside two passengers are gonna have a heated seat. We got our vents and our USB ports down there, cup holders in the center. Cool safety feature from Volvo, it's been around for a long time. Every single passenger has a lock button, so if your kids are in the car and you run into the store, they feel unsafe, they can lock it from right there. Up front is very much the same. We have our leatherette, feels like leather, but isn't here in the sides. And then in the center, we have more new buck. Front seats get some additional adjustment. This got this cushion extension right here as well as four-way power lumbar. The cushion extension is really good for tall people like me. I'm a huge fan of that feature. The upholstery options for 2023 are going to change. This is just what was in a 22 Ultimate, so all that will be changing. I don't have anything to show you right now. But last thing about seats, both of these are going to be heated. Steering wheel is also heated and we have two position memory for the driver so you can support up to two drivers really easy. Interior on the C40 is very much what we expect from Volvo at this point. It's very clean, minimalistic, nicest materials you can get. And there's not too much going on. We try to focus on this screen up here and try to make it as uncluttered and as nice a place to be as possible. Center console shows some really cool engineering as far as using space in a small vehicle like this. So starter, you can see we have the nice white stitching across the console lid that matches the seats. We got a ton of room here in our center console. This is a removable trash can. So for smaller items, you just toss them in there, pop it out and go dump it. Up in front of that, cup holders obviously in our shifter. This right here is a cell phone holder. So you flip that up, you can stick it in here. It gives it a nice place to stand up for you if you're using it for navigation. Just past that is our wireless phone charger with some additional storage here. And under that is our USB ports for Apple CarPlay, which is coming soon and Android Auto, which we have right now. Couple features in here are only on the Ultimate trim. So we have pilot assist here on the left side of the steering wheel, semi-autonomous. We'll talk about that when we hit the road. Here in the center screen, this will actually be a part of the plus package, but we have the 360 cam, so you don't get that on the standard models. And lastly, we have the Harman Kardon stereo up there. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that soon. Really cool standard features we find on all Volvos though are automatic high beams for when you're driving on country roads, it'll flip them on and off for you. Over here on the right side, we have rain sensing wipers with adjustable sensitivity. That's on all of our cars, super cool feature. It's really convenient. We have our new digital driver's display up here by Google, which is configurable. So I've got Google Maps up there right now. If I wanted a more calm driving experience, I'll just tap that to make it go away. And I can tap this to bring it right back up. All of my trip information is hidden in a screen, so it's not cluttered with all this stuff. You just have to go in there and find it. I prefer having it behind that screen rather than across the bottom and having a bunch of different pieces of information. 
This being an EV, these two sections right here are very important and I'll show you as they work while we're driving later. Well, of course we have our battery gauge. Notice it does not give me a mile adjustment. It will not do that until I get towards the bottom of the battery. It's not accurate until you're towards the bottom of the battery. So it could pop up a number here that will change quite significantly. We don't really want that. Over here on the gauge, you can see our yellow line showing power and charge. When I accelerate and use the throttle to go forward, the line will rise into the power section of the gauge. And then when I'm braking, it will drop below there and go into the charge section showing my regenerative braking. Otherwise, with technology, C40s are all going to be equipped with our new Google infotainment system, which is fantastic. Up here at the top, we're always going to have Google Maps on board. So we all know Google Maps is generally better than what cars have on them. Super nice to have this here and always updated. We also have a lot of charging station integration. So if I try to go somewhere outside of my current range, it's going to suggest charging stops, how long I need to stay there, and when I need to go to the next one. It's really convenient. You can see it's showing me all the charge points, medium, slow speeds, and it'll also show me some high-speed chargers as well. Second one down is always going to be our media information. As you can see, we already have Spotify on here. We just like to show that to the customers, but we have a bunch of other apps already. Of course, we have radio, Sirius XM, Bluetooth. Those are standard. There's podcasting apps, and we have some others on here as well. Radio.com, Libby's good for audiobooks. So all these can be downloaded from the Play Store, and then they will pop up right here. So it's super easy to use, and then you can make your selections going from Spotify to podcast super quick and easy. Below that's our integrated phone controls, make calls, take calls, that type of thing. The bottom one is going to be the only one that's ever going to change right now. It's showing me our range estimator, so range assistant. So it shows me how driving style, speed, and climate control use are affecting my range. And I can also optimize my range with that button right there if I'm getting a little anxious that I'm going to make it. Also on the bottom, if I swipe here, you can see we have car status. That's for service, but cool, really cool one is going to be Google Assistant. So I'm going to tap that. How big is Central Park? The surface area of Central Park is 1.32 square miles. So this is powered by Google. It'll listen to me everything I say. And if I wanted to ask a question such as that, it'll go out and Google it and get it for me. Another really cool thing is being that it's integrated with the car, we can use it to control car function. So I can say, hey Google, turn on my heated seat. Okay, turning on the seat heater for the driver. And you can see right there popped on, went on to high. I could have specified medium or low if I wanted, but it will also do that. I can adjust the temperature, I can do navigation, and a bunch of other things. Hey Google, take me to Arby's. There's a Arby's 1.1 miles away. Navigate to that one? It just works. Stop Google. Obviously it asked me if I wanted to navigate, so if I was driving I would just have answered yes. One more cool thing to point out up top, this looks like it's just painted black like the rest of the roof, like this edge here, but that is actually glass. That is because of the really heavy tent we have on there. The tent is because we do not have a sunshade internal, so that is always going to be open. The tent is going to block a majority of the UV radiation and the heat coming in here, so you won't notice the fact that you don't have a sunshade. Another thing to point out, that is laminated glass, so God forbid you're in an accident. If it does break, it will stay in one sheet and one piece up there. It's not going to come down. Volvo is a safety company. They would not have put that in there if it wasn't absolutely safe. Last thing for the interior, all the Ultimates are going to have the Harman Kardon stereo as standard. So we have a full range up there. It does highs and lows in the dashboard. Buried under the passenger seat is our all digital 600 watt amp. So we have tons of power to power all these speakers. Down here in the driver's door panel, we just have this tweeter right there. Coming around here to the rear door panels, we're going to have a mid-range down low and another tweeter up high. Cargo compartment, we have two more mid-ranges back here, and then up under the dash is an air woofer. So it uses the entire inside of this car as the box, which gives you really awesome base performance. So we've done exterior, we've done interior, we've talked about all the features in tech, but what really makes this different is going to be the drive line. So we got a lot to talk about there. First thing to point out is this is built, it's called a skateboard platform. I'm going to pop up a picture to show you a little bit more explanation of what I'm talking about, and I'll describe it to you. The battery is all the way across the bottom of the floor. Essentially, you are sitting on top of it. It is a flat piece that goes all the way across. That makes all of the weight in the vehicle be really low, and it also allows for a bunch of extra room on the interior of the vehicle. Cutting back in, you can almost see the battery right there. It is in a large extruded aluminum casing. It's really packed tightly up under there. That is for crash safety. Obviously, there's a lot of energy potentially in there. So if you're going to hit this thing from the side, that battery is designed to squirt out the other side and not crush or do anything silly like that. It's entirely water cooled to keep itself at the right temperature at all times. It can heat or cool itself. And then lastly, this has a system where if you are in an accident, it will disconnect the power going to the rest of the vehicle to all the high voltage components for the safety of the first responders. 
Last thing about the battery, it is a 78 kilowatt hour. It's lithium ion. It's composed of 27 different modules inside. People get really nervous about lithium ion batteries in cars because they're kind of unproven. They're new technology. Cool thing about ours, Ralph here in the service department, he can drop it right out the bottom, replace individual modules inside of it and get it all put back together rather than having it as all one really large, really expensive unit. We can't talk about the battery in an EV without talking about charging. It's very important. So just for information's sake, there's three different levels. Level one is your standard household outlet, 110 volt, what you plug your toaster into. Level two is gonna be 220 volt. We recommend a NEMA 1450 plug. That's the four prong, kind of like what a dryer uses. That's called level two. And we have level three, which is a DC direct current fast charger. And you will only find those in public charging stations you are not allowed to install them at your home. You require three phase electricity for those. So to begin, level one charging. So plugging this into a regular household outlet like you have all over your house, that's gonna get you 1.4 kilowatts of energy going into the car. So it will take 72 hours to charge on 110 volt. That is why we do not recommend it. It is not feasible for most customers. 110 volt is an emergency backup, last case scenario. Level two at home charging is really gonna be the sweet spot for a battery electric vehicle like this. So at home on a level two charger on a 240 volt outlet, using the included charger cable in here, you can expect anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. The reason why we give a range is because charge time is gonna depend on battery state of charge, battery temperature, many different factors come into that. So we usually get a range 10 to 12 on the included charger cable. So that's really the sweet spot. You plug it in when you get home, unplug it when you're ready to leave and you should be in business. That level two charging with the included charger cord, that is on a 40 amp circuit. If you would like, you can have a wall box such as this installed and these can run on up to a 60 amp circuit. That's gonna decrease your charge time. We're gonna say eight to 10 hours overnight. If you have this set up, you get a slightly faster charge just because you have those extra 20 amps available. That said, you do have to run a larger capability circuit through your house to get the 60 amp. So we really feel the 40 amp 240 volt circuit is the ideal setup for a battery electric. Last option is gonna be level three DC fast charging from a public station. That bypasses the onboard charger on here and it sends power directly to the battery. That means we are capable of charging up to 80% and as low as 40 minutes. Like I said, everything varies on these cars. Temperature of the battery is the biggest thing. So you have to be preconditioned to get that specific 40 minute number. You plug into a fast charger, you're gonna get some range really quickly. Important caveat for fast charging, it is much better to charge your car on level two at home every day than it is to rely on level three fast chargers. That's because that fast charger is pretty harsh on the battery and it will over time start to degrade your battery if you use that type of charging all the time. Speaking of battery health, we do not recommend discharging this car below 20%. So if you're driving and you get around that number, it may be time to go home and plug it in or find a public charging station. To that end, it is also not good for the battery to charge it above 90% on a regular basis. So we recommend charging it up to 90 for daily use. And if you have a really long trip you need to go on, put it up to 100. While we're talking about charging, this is the central screen here for our charging setup. This is gonna be how you regulate your battery level as far as charging limits. So right now it's set, it'll only charge up to 90%. We're doing that because somebody's gonna own this car one day and we wanna take care of it while we've got it. Below that is our amperage limit. We can charge up to 48 amps. So I mentioned earlier putting the charge point wall box on a 60 amp circuit, you only really get 48 amps of capability because that's the max the car can handle. If you plug this in at your home and it keeps blowing breakers or anything, you'll come in here to the charging menu and you can reduce the charging level right there. Super easy. Get it below what your circuit is capable of and you won't blow the breaker. You also have the ability to set a timer if you want the car to charge during non-peak hours where you get a little bit better rate. Last thing to mention about charging is our charge port here just opens like a regular gas door and we get in here. So the top one here is our SAE J1772. That's the standard. This is what you would use for level one and level two charging. So at home, you'd just be plugging into this one. We do have a release button right here. So the car locks the cable into it so people can't take it out. When you have it unlocked, you can press this button and it'll release it. Below that, under this cover, those are our pins for our DC fast charging capability. So you would only take this plug out if you're at a public fast charger and you're gonna use one of those. Everybody is totally used to going to the gas station and just filling their car up. It is gonna take some time for all of us to get accustomed to these EVs and figure out charging. That's why it's a very helpful Volvo, Volvo dealerships and all the major OEMs are right there ready to help you out if you own an EV and you have questions about charging. We're almost done inside. The last thing I wanna talk about is the motors we have under here. They are 
fairly identical. They both produce the same amount of power. Both of them are producing 201 horsepower. We have one in between the front wheels and one in between the rears. What that gets us is what's called E all wheel drive. There is no mechanical connection between the axles, but via the computer, via a bunch of sensors in the drive line and the wheels, we can determine what's going on and the computer can send power where it's necessary through the front or the rear motor. Combined, we get 402 horsepower and 487 pound-feet of torque. If you're not informed, electric cars produce all of that torque and power the instant you ask for it. There is no need for it to rev up. So you'll see it during the drive. This thing is incredibly quick. We do zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. It is one exhilarating drive. I would show you the motors if I could. They are buried up under there. They streamline the bottom of these cars to try to reduce aerodynamic drag and increase range. So there's really nothing I can show you. They're permanent magnet, three phase motors, pretty standard for what you would expect in a battery electric vehicle. All of these optimizations for aerodynamics, battery capacity, motors, all of that stuff has cumulatively come together to get us 226 miles of all electric range. Perfectly good for most people's daily needs. A lot of people mentioned, well, you couldn't drive to Florida in it. You definitely could if you hit up fast chargers during the way, it's gonna take you a little bit longer, but multiple people have pointed out it is entirely feasible to do. For my daily needs, I would be able to use this thing and charge it like once every three days. So a lot of people get too in the weeds about it and think a little bit about it too much. I know that was a lot of information. Just a couple other things I wanna point out. We have a four year, 50,000 mile warranty on this particular vehicle. So that's bumper to bumper. That's to be expected on luxury cars. Second warranty, we have an eight year, 100,000 mile warranty on just the battery. So any issues with that, we will get you taken care of. People are really nervous about these batteries because they are significantly expensive. But like I mentioned earlier, we can repair the battery. We don't need to just replace it. And you're covered for the first eight years, 100,000 miles. Last thing I wanted to point out is you get 250 kilowatts worth of free fast charging through Electrify America. So you'll be able to charge up your car really fast a couple times for free, which would be really nice. With all that said, let's hit the road. All right, I've got the C40 moved outside. Before we hit the road, I am going to do a couple laps around the dealership here and show off a little bit of one pedal driving so you guys understand how that works. As you can see here, I have one pedal drive shut off right now. So when we begin, we are going to be driving like a regular car. This is gonna be really low speed stuff, just demonstrating this one feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in drive here and we'll just start rolling forward. I take my foot off the brake and the vehicle begins creeping like a normal gas car. It'll go up to about five miles an hour. I'm not pressing either pedal right now, as you can see, but as I give it a little bit of throttle on the right hand side, we're gonna speed up. up to about 10 here, and then I lift my foot off, and we're gonna coast. So you can see there, we're getting no regenerative braking on the right side, we're getting nothing for regeneration. So we are just coasting, we're just freewheeling right now. I'm gonna use the brakes to get us to come to a stop. We'll come over here, go to driving, driving up top. Now we're gonna turn on one pedal driving mode. So this is gonna change significantly how this feels for me. So I take my foot off the brake, Vehicle does not move. I'm gonna start putting my foot down on the throttle and we're gonna begin moving. And then, as I lift my foot off, we come to a stop. Do that one more time. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 miles an hour and I can lift off. I can lift off a small amount to just slow down or if I come off completely, we will come to a stop. This one pedal driving mode is mainly meant for in town driving. If you're on the highway, it is recommended that that is turned off. You'd be better off coasting on the highway. But when you're in start and stop traffic, this is A, extremely convenient and really nice to use. Come to a stop right there. And B, it is also gonna be more efficient and regenerate more, regenerate more electricity through the brakes for you. So in town, this is the mode to be in. Now that I've got that out of the way and you guys see what I'm talking about when I say one pedal drive, let's hit the real road out there. All right, we've talked about the exterior, the interior, the drivetrain, but it's time to show you what this thing is capable of instead of just talking about it. So I've had it preconditioning itself since it is over 100 degrees today, just for my own sake. The vehicle is not truly on right now. You can see my display is all black. I do not have a start button here. What we have is there is a switch in my seat, and when I put it in drive with my foot on the brake, we're good to go. So I'm going to be in one pedal driving mode, leaving the auto mall. It's gonna recapture a lot of energy for me and be really convenient. Right there with that motorcycle pulling out in front of me, I did not need to use the brakes at all. I just lifted off of the gas, 
if it was a more emergency of a scenario, obviously the brake pedal is still down there for me. While I'm sitting in traffic, of course we can discuss how it's completely silent in here. The only thing I can hear is the blower motor going a little bit. Obviously, if you guys weren't tagging along with me, I'd be listening to the radio and that would drown that out. All right, and now that we have passed that traffic jam, we're going to be getting out into a little more remote of an area. I'm turning one pedal drive off, so this will behave like a normal vehicle, like what I'm used to driving. So now I have to use the brake pedal to come to a stop, obviously. We're going to be hanging a right here. We had a pretty wicked windstorm in Fort Wayne last night, so all these people are getting our utilities put back together. Thank you, guys. Now the world's longest and slowest train has passed. We can get out to the test drive route. I actually shut the camera off on that one. We were sitting here for so long. Now around the traffic circle, glad that Lincoln went the way he did. This is where a skateboard platform really comes in. You can corner this thing pretty hard, and because the weight's all down low, it doesn't feel crazy. There's no drama at all. It just kind of changes direction extremely easily. Now that we got some space, you can see the gauge I was talking about earlier. When it goes above power, that's when I'm on the gas. When it goes down to charge, that's when I'm on the brakes. So that should give you an idea of what I'm doing with my feet. We're going into this first corner here. Again, the center of gravity is so low, it just changes direction. Instant torque gets you out of the corner very quickly. EVs are so shockingly quick. If you've never driven one before, I highly recommend you find a way to get behind the wheel of one. Truly never gets old. Coming up to this four-way here, we will use this as a good spot for an acceleration test. You remember when I mentioned the staggered wheels? The rears, we're going to squat and the rears are going to grab on here, so let's go. That acceleration is incredible. It literally never gets old. I don't know if it'll transfer over the camera, but I could hear the front tire struggling for grip because the weight transferred back and then all the weight was pushing those rear tires into the tarmac for me. See, dipping down into charge a lot when I'm on the brakes, so we're regenerating a lot of energy. The car is deciding how much regeneration from the motors we get and how much friction braking we get from the traditional mechanical brakes. Right here, merging onto Highway 30, we do not get a stoplight. I am on my own to get out into traffic, and that's where the instant tor torque of my electric motors is going to be awesome. Gonna hop right out after this guy. We'll probably be doing highway speed within five seconds. And boom. 65 miles an hour, like that. Right there was a great example of the passing power that you get in something like this. Just wanted to not be behind him, didn't want to be in his blind spot. Super easy, just pop out, zip right by them. If you're wondering, electric cars pull just as hard from 60 onwards as they do from zero at the beginning. I've never been in a car that squats at 60 miles an hour when you put your foot down. It is impressive. Pulled up the range assistant just to show you what that looks like when use. You can see my speed and my driving style have both been a little enthusiastic. So I've been using a little bit extra energy there. Climate control is up towards the end. It's almost 100 degrees today, so the air conditioner has been working pretty hard. If I wanted to, I would tap this button right here to gain back some of my range. It would optimize the air conditioning and other systems in the car to try to save as much power as possible for later. Now that we're getting back to start and stop traffic, I am going to put us back into one pedal drive mode. Just go to driving, it's at the bottom, one pedal driving. Now. I'm in control with just my right foot on the throttle pedal again. It's important to switch back and forth and be comfortable with both if you have an EV because they do really both have their use cases and the places where they work the best. Out there on I-69, if I was in one pedal mode, I really would have been wasting energy. And we are back home here at Volvo. I hope you enjoyed riding along with me in the C40. I always enjoy driving this thing. 
Did my best to not chuckle like a little kid every time I accelerated, because usually that's what happens when I drive this car. I mean it, if you've never driven an EV before, go out and find a place where you can test drive one and just see what they're all about. You will be so shocked what these cars are capable of. Now that I've got it parked and we're in park gear to shut it off, all I gotta do is get out. There you have it, the 2022 Volvo C40 Recharge. If you have any questions about this specific car, it is our demo, so it should be here for quite a bit longer if you wanna come check out this exact car. If you have any other questions, you can reach out to us at Tom Kelly Volvo Cars. You can reach out to us online via phone call or just stop in. We'd be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.